A mile, maybe, from Parth Gallon, in a little glade not far from the lake, he found Boromir. He was sitting with his back to a great tree, as if he was resting. But Aragorn saw that he was pierced with many black-feathered arrows. His sword was still in his hand, but it was broken near the hilt. His horn cloven in two was at his side. Many orcs lay slain, piled all about him and at his feet. Next to him knelt two small figures, hobbits, Merry and Pippin. As Aragorn approached, he heard Boromir speak his final words to the hobbits. I depart in gladness, knowing that you both are safe. Farewell, my friends. Save Minas Tirith, if you can. With that, Boromir died, looking at Merry and Pippin one last time. He was the second member of the Fellowship to pass, but the other seven members were still gathered near Parth Galen, near the falls of Raurus. Aragorn knelt beside Boromir saying some final goodbye under his breath. Turning towards the hobbits and the slain orcs and uruks, he asked Pippin and Merry what befell here. Pippin and Merry, unscathed by the battle, spoke of Boromir's bravery in defending them from the orcs, until they were all slain or driven off, but at the cost of Boromir's life. Before long, Gimli and Legolas came there also, and then the five took up Boromir's body and brought him, his weapons, and the weapons of his vanquished foes down to the boats. It is there they found Frodo and Sam, hiding, but alive and well. Frodo seemed shaken, but in seeing the body of Boromir, his sorrow poured forth, like a river that has broken through a dam. He wept openly, but diverted his eyes from the High Warden of Gondor's body. He soon told the others what had befallen between him and Boromir some moments earlier, when the man had tried to take the ring from him. But he is slain, and my friends are alive and well. He must have kept his honor in the end, said Frodo. That much is true, Aragorn replied, dismayed by Frodo's story, but with pity in his heart. We must send him back to Gondor, for we owe him that much at least. Gondor lost its greatest defender today, and we have a moment to mourn before we must press on. We were at a crossroads before the fall of Boromir, but now I think we must stay together. Anduril will come to Minas Tirith, but by a different road, once the ring is destroyed. We will cross Nen Hithoel, and by that road take to the Emin Muil. It will put Anduin between us and any more of these orcs of the White Hand. Are we agreed in this? The members of the Fellowship unanimously agreed that they must press on together, so that the deaths of Gandalf and Boromir were not in vain. And so they lamented Boromir, singing their song. And his body was returned to Gondor over the falls of Rauros, and the rest of the Fellowship went over the lake and east towards Mordor and the Black Gate. Since Aragorn was with Frodo, Sam, and the others in this version of the story, they would quickly traverse through the Imminent Wheel, and would not need the guidance of Gollum, for surely Aragorn had ranged these paths in the days when he went far afield, or could at least find his way through. Speaking of Gollum, since Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli were still with the four hobbits, he would not dare attempt to attack or intercept them, but he would continue to linger behind as he had done since Moria. Aragorn would bring the company quickly and easily through the Dead Marshes, having captured Gollum there some years before, and he knew its dangers and the paths through it. Meanwhile, Gandalf the White, who was recloaked in Lothlorien, would be faced with the decision. Pursue the company that, by the word of the Eagles, was making their way towards Mordor, or aid Rohan with its fight against Saruman, for surely they would be crushed if nothing changed. And so it was that Gandalf entrusted the quest of the Ring to Aragorn's leadership, Frodo's will, and the courage of the remaining members of the company. And then he went straightway to Treebeard, whom he knew of. With words of courage, strength, and persuasion, he convinced Treebeard to call an entment to discuss Saruman's treachery. Then, flying on Shadowfax as quickly as he could, he came to Edoras to awake Theoden from his darkness and the treachery of Grima. Theoden, Eomer, and their riders would go forth to meet Isengard in open battle, but Gandalf would see the oncoming threat and would persuade Theoden to lead his people to Helm's Deep and attempt to hold out there long enough for Gandalf to retrieve Urkenbrand and his men. Since Gandalf would have more to do in Rohan here than in the original plot, without the aid of the Three Hunters or Merry and Pippin, I still think Shadowfax would have borne him to where he needed to go with enough time for victory. Assuming the Ents still attacked Isengard, Gandalf would ask Treebeard to send horns to Helm's Deep, and he'd find Urkenbrand's forces and lead them to the Deep ere dawn came during the Battle of Helm's Deep. This would be very similar to how it happened canonically, but I think more casualties would have happened at the battle. Indeed, the battle itself would go more ill for the Free Peoples, but it would not be a defeat. Aomer would have been slain without the aid of Gimli and Aragorn, 
but Theoden and some of his men would still survive throughout the night. Eowyn would thus be the new heir of Theoden, and the Rohirrim would grieve much for their lost commander. Still, not all was lost, and through the efforts of Gandalf, Sauron would still be defeated, but just barely. Now coming back to the remaining members of the Fellowship, they would come to the outskirts of Dagorlod, within view of the Black Gate, but Aragorn would see its defenses, and know that it would be futile to attempt to enter there. We must seek for another path, as attempting the Black Gate would be folly. We shall be slain ere we reach its opening, and the ring will fall into his hands once more. No, let us seek for any allies in Athelion that might be there. Perhaps they will know where we could try. And so, through Aragorn's wisdom, the company would seek southwards, but the question of where Gandalf meant to bring the company originally was on the mind of every member. Coming into Athelion, Aragorn would attempt to find traces of the rangers who once lived there, but Faramir would find them first. Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli would aid the rangers during their attack against the Haradrim in Athelion, and Faramir would recognize the valor and Numenorean nature of Aragorn. Faramir would then lead the remaining members of the Fellowship back to Henneth Anun, and would be quite fascinated with Aragorn. Lord, you bear the virtue of Numenor within you, it is plain to see. Who are you, and what is your purpose here? Aragorn would, in turn, recognize the bearing of the Dúnedain within Faramir, answering, I am Aragorn, son of Erethorn of the North. My allies and I seek safe passage across your land. We cannot speak openly of our mission, for it is one of secrecy. But if you know of a way into Mordor that is beneath notice, we would be in your debt. Faramir would consider this, and his prophetic dream he had had the year before would unravel before him, and he would then ask of Boromir and speak of their brotherhood. Pippin and Merry would tell him how he failed to save them, and just as incidentally as it happens in the book, Sam would let slip that it was the One Ring they carried. Aragorn would look at Faramir, wondering what he might do, hoping in his heart that the brother of Boromir was just as loyal, but not as rash, as Boromir was himself. Faramir, of course, would not attempt to take the ring and would act with wisdom, agreeing to speak to them of the pass of Kirith Ungol and taking them towards the crossroads the next day. However, that night, Gollum would be fishing in the Forbidden Pool. Aragorn, having encountered and captured this creature before, would not have him slain, but would want the rangers to capture him and question him as their prisoner. Perhaps he would even want to speak to him himself. Thus, Gollum would be caught by Faramir's men and kept by them, even as they returned to Osgiliath and Minas Tirith, and the rest of the Fellowship set out towards Minas Morgul and Kirith Ungol. Now, looking back at Gandalf in the West, this is where things begin to get dark for the Free Peoples. In the original timeline, Aragorn looked into the Palantir at Helm's Deep, and provoked Sauron's attack on Minas Tirith early. But now, without Aragorn's moment with the Palantir, Gandalf, Rohan, and Gondor would have more time to prepare for the attack and onslaught against Minas Tirith. However, there would be no Oathbreakers from the Paths of the Dead led by Aragorn to save Pilargir, and that would also be taken by the Corsairs. The Riders of Rohan would receive the Red Arrow and have a bit more time to make a greater muster of its people before riding for Gondor but without Eomer, for he was slain, and Gandalf would go to Denethor and attempt to make Gondor's defenses stronger, which he would do with more of this time. However, more time aids both sides, and surely it would aid Sauron more than the Free Peoples. But concerning the Fellowship, they would climb the pass of Kirith Ungol, and the Witch King's army would not march forth from Minas Morgul quite yet. Coming up to the top, Aragorn and the others knew this was a safer passage than the Black Gate. They came into Shelob's lair, and she would waylay them, but with Frodo, Sam, Merry, Pippin, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli standing together, she would be quite easily defeated, for just as Baron of Old likely battled some of Unguliant's brood in the Elder Days, Aragorn, the heir of Baron, and his allies would easily defeat Shelob, and would even waylay and have victory against the orcs that captured Frodo in the original timeline. And so it was that the Fellowship entered Mordor, only to find all the hosts of Mordor and its allies among men between them and Mount Doom, they had not yet moved against Menas Tirith without Aragorn provoking Sauron with the Palantir. The Fellowship would be forced to wait until Sauron finally ordered his forces against Gondor, and then the lands of Mordor were mostly emptied, allowing for the Fellowship to cross the plains. Looking back now towards Gondor, Faramir would be sent by Denethor to retake the forts of Osgiliath, but without Pippin, Faramir would burn with his father Denethor on the pyre during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Theoden would be slain by the Witch King, and without Merry there to help her, Eowyn would also be killed by the Witch King. With the Corsairs from Umbar sailing up Anduin, it would only be a matter of hours before Menas Tirith fell, and Gandalf with it. However, the Fellowship, with the time that they were given from the battle, would make their way to Mount Doom, 
But in the end, without Gollum there, Frodo would be unable to destroy the One Ring. The Fellowship came to a hard choice in the end. They could take the ring from Frodo and attempt to destroy it themselves, or they could go back. In the moment that Frodo took the ring, the Nazgul would be called back from the Pelennor Fields to Mount Doom, and they would arrive before Frodo could escape the mountain. Indeed, the members of the Fellowship would not slay him, but they would not let Frodo leave either. And so, when the Nine Nazgul arrived, Aragorn had to make a decision that would change the course of Arda forever. He found the invisible Frodo and took the ring from him, attempting to destroy it himself, but just like a sealed door, Aragorn would take it for himself, not having the will to destroy it. Thus, even as Gondor in the West burned, and the White Tree was lit aflame, Aragorn with his allies defeated the Nazgul, wearing the One Ring himself. But he could not destroy the Ring. None of them could. And so Aragorn marched on Barad-dûr, hoping to sneak in and at least end Sauron as he might. And in this, Aragorn with the One Ring would be successful and the physical form of Sauron in Barad-dûr would be defeated. But in the west, Gondor and Rohan lost most of its folk. The armies of Mordor burned Minas Tirith and spread into Gondor's countryside, and the One Ring endured. Thus Aragorn, even as he would try to save what remained of the west, slowly fell to the spirit of Sauron, becoming a tyrant himself, ruling over any small number of people he could find. Gandalf was gone, and the elves fled from Middle-earth. And many years hence, Sauron would arise again to challenge the heir of Aragorn, and finish his work, whether or not the descendants of Aragorn bore the ring or lost it once more, like Isildur did. And thus, we come to the end of our theory about what if the Fellowship never split, for without the aid of Merry, Pippin, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli during the war in the West, all would have been lost. From this theory, we see that the chances of life are odd, and even the things that seem to be ill-fated, such as the splitting of the Fellowship, may bring about good fate in the end. Hey everyone, Yoisten here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. I also hope you all enjoyed this theory, grim though it was. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections for this theory? Let me know in the comments below. As I often say with these theories, in the canonical version of The Lord of the Rings, the West barely won against Sauron. So if most anything was changed in the process, it likely would have resulted in a grim defeat for the West. But there are other things that could have changed to aid the West against Sauron as well. This theory in particular was interesting, as getting to Mount Doom would have been easier, but the War of the Ring would have been made far worse for the Free Peoples had this happened. I want to shout out our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Torre, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout, and Tobias Goldner, Merton, John Hume, Ridgey93, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, and Kondar. Thank you so much, and thank you to all of our patrons. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on the Sword Sting. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.